Have you ever felt scared, sad or angry while watching a movie, reading a book or playing a video game? If so, you might have wondered how it is possible to have such strong emotions for things that you know are not real. Welcome back to Daily Philosophy, where we look at the surprising and often amazing thoughts of philosophers from ancient times to today. In this episode, we will talk about the paradox of fiction, a fascinating concept that challenges our understanding of emotions and blurs the boundaries between reality and imagination. I'm your host, Andy. Sit back, relax, and let's dive right in. The paradox of fiction asks how we can experience genuine emotions for things that are not real. How can we fear a monster in a horror movie or shed tears for a tragic hero in a play? After all, we know that these characters are just made up. The paradox of fiction arises from three seemingly true but incompatible claims. First, we have emotional responses to fictional characters, objects and events that we encounter in works of art. Second, to have emotional responses to something, we must believe that it exists. Third, we do not believe that fictional characters, objects and events exist. You can see the paradox. We cannot accept all three claims at the same time without contradiction. If we accept the first and the second, then we must reject the third, which means that we are irrational or deluded when we engage with fiction. If we accept two and three, then we must reject one, which means that we do not really have emotional responses to fiction, but only pretend or imagine them. If we accept one and three, then we must reject two which means that emotional responses do not require us to believe in the existence of what causes them, but perhaps depend on some other kind of mental state. So how can we solve this paradox? One way would be to deny claim one. We could argue that we do not really have emotional responses to fiction, but only make believe or simulate them. According to this theory, when we watch a horror movie, for example, we play a game of make-believe, in which we imagine ourselves to be in the situation of the characters and act as if we were afraid of the monster. The problem with this theory is that it seems to contradict our experience. When we see a really good monster movie, we are really scared. We don't just pretend to be. When we watch a tragic story, we may cry. It does not ring true to say that we are just pretending. Second, to have emotional responses to something, we must believe that it exists. Another way would be to deny this claim. Perhaps emotional responses do not require us to believe that the fictional characters exist. Perhaps just a thought is enough to cause emotions in us. When we watch a horror movie, for example, we do not need to believe that the monster exists or existed, but only need to have a thought or a mental image of it. This thought or image is enough to trigger our emotional response. But is this really the case? If this was so, we would expect to have emotional responses to all sorts of thoughts. But we do react differently to a government report on poverty and to a moving story of a poor child. Stories are more gripping than statistics. Movies more than PowerPoint slides. Why is that? Perhaps the appearance of reality that the movie provides is indeed necessary for our emotional response. Finally, let's examine claim 3. We do not believe that fictional characters, objects and events exist. We could deny claim 3 and argue that we do have existence beliefs when we engage with fiction, but only perhaps temporarily or partially. According to this theory, when we watch a horror movie, for example, we suspend our disbelief 
and allow ourselves to be immersed in the fictional world. During this immersion, we form beliefs that the characters and events are real, even though we know that they are not. These beliefs are then responsible for our emotional responses. However, these beliefs are not stable or consistent and can be easily overridden by our background knowledge or external cues. What do you think? Which of the three solutions agrees best with your own experience? Tell me in the comments. If you enjoyed this exploration of the paradox of fiction, make sure to hit the subscribe button and join our community of curious minds. Until next time, and keep philosophizing.